Hello everyone, it's me, Bob, or Ben, or it's confusing with online names. Anyway, I'm going to be your dungeon master for this, a, a cruise through the world of Ravnica in the 5th edition of Dungeons & Dragons called Have I Got News For You. More on that in a moment. Ah... Uh, Thank you, Bookish Girl, for the follow. Um, I will address all of the follows and anything else that comes up after we've done all the gameplay, but we're still in the intro, so I figured I'd acknowledge that one. Anyway, this is Have I Got News For You. Um, we're going to be having a lot of fun here. Uh, just a quick thing to talk about my dungeon mastering style. Um, uh... I tend to err on the more fun, um, descriptive role-playing side of things. Um, I'm very much a person where the story comes first, not the rules. So if at any point I make a ruling that doesn't agree with what's written in the great book, cool, it's now a house rule. And if I rule differently later on, cool, that's the house rule now. Uh, I just like to keep the story moving and having a lot of fun. Uh, before we get into the meat of the story, uh, we're going to go around, we're going to meet all our players, they're going to introduce themselves, and they're going to introduce the characters. And we are going to start with Jordan. Oh, hi. Uh, I'm Jordan. Uh, I am the other half of, uh, 3, 2, 1 with, uh, with Bob here. And, um, I am playing, uh, Adelchi the Orzov cleric who uh, tries to make sure that everything is staying the way it needs to uh, with our little news team here and when necessary uh, greasing palms or collecting uh, favors and debts from people so that we can get done what we need to get done. And now we move on to Amy. Hello, I'm Amy. I'm playing Zimzix, a uh, goblin rogue uh, of, uh, yeah, House Demir. House Demir. Yeah. Demir. Uh, while my specialty is photojournalism, I'm also the one who kind of gets people in the door. Uh, so we'll the, talk about, the, we'll talk more about what you actually roll you feel once yeah. or now. So that's, that's kind of me in a nutshell. And we move down now to Poetics. Hey everybody, uh, I'm Poetics, and uh, Rurik, my my character, is uh, a little a little down in the smarts department, but uh, very big in the heart department. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and Jamie, what you got? Uh, I'm Jamie. Uh, I am running a Loxodon sorcerer named Augustus, and I'm from the Is It League. Cool. Uh, just as another small note. Um, I've had a bit of a cough recently. My throat's a bit sore, so I won't be doing all the voices I usually would. Um, I'll try and do some where I can, but uh, I promise nothing. Um, so, with that being said, uh, this is episode one of Have I Got News For You, a Ravnica adventure. Episode one, titled... <laughs> I can't believe I called it this. Oh, no. <laughs> so, not an easy choice. Wait. <laughs> Knowing nothing about Ravnica, I, I <coughs> don't have the same reaction that the others do. <laughs> okay, so. Opening box text. Dun, dun, dun. The plane of Ravnica is an ecumenopolis. Every square inch is, or in the case of the lands of the Gruul clans, was covered in city. Divided into districts, and those further divided into precincts, Ravnican life has ticked along because of one thing, the guilds. Ten thousand years ago, war ravaged Ravnica. Ten armies clashed in mighty, bloody battles, and eventually, when a peace was reached, the ten armies signed the mystically binding document known as the Guild Pact, forming Ravnica's ten guilds. This document stood for 10,000 years, till during the Decamillennial celebrations, 
that was undermined and the peace was shattered, leaving Ravnica in a flux. Some years later, it was discovered that when the original guild pack had been de developed, a failsafe had been put into place, a mystical construct set up along Ravnica's ley lines called the Implicit Maze, an obstacle course that would be forced the guilds to work together, conquer, and com on completion of which they would be able to re-establish the guild pact. The guilds then helpfully circumnavigated the maze by fighting their way through it, rather than working together, and caused the end result to go a little awry. Rather than a new cat be guild pact being conjured, it was imbued into a person. Azorius law mage Jace Balerin became the living guild pact. Any law he spoke confirmation of became immutable, magical, and binding. The issue is, Jace is a planeswalker, meaning 99% of the time he's not on Ravnica. He's off meddling with the affairs of other realms and places. Jace's planes hopping eventually brought the War of the Spark to Ravnica. The elder dragon god Nicol Bolas and his armies of Lazotep covered zombies poured forth from portals on the streets of the 10th district, supported by an insidious plot to take over the guilds. Given most of most the guild headquarters are in the 10th district, Bolas trapped planeswalkers on Ravnica and attempted to relieve them of their sparks. Thankfully, through the combined efforts of the 10 guilds and the 36 planeswalkers, Bolas was driven from Ravnica in a massive climactic battle that was unlike anything Ravnica had seen before. Problem is, you don't live in the 10th district, which, even before the War of the Spark, was home to all of Ravnica's guild halls, and therefore, their seats of power and excitement. You live in the 7th district, voted most, boris di most boring district to live in seven years running, in the year-end polls of the 7th District Times-Picayune, District 7 holds the distinction of being the only district in all of Ravnica not to have a stop on the illicit maze. If there is an excitement epicenter on Ravnica, this is the district furthest from it. That is, until recently. Two years ago at Kapitza Dirac University in the neighbouring 6th District, the ever-inventive engineers of the Izzet League developed a technology they thought little of at the time, the ability to transmit images and sound over airwaves simultaneously. This is where House Demir enters the picture. When the Guild Pact was signed 10,000 years ago, House Demir were a network of spies, assassins, information brokers, and masters of clandestine operations. Now, however, to the rav average Ravnican, the Demir are librarians, archivists, couriers, and journalists operating Ravnica's many newspapers. Right? 10,000 years Ravnica has existed with the new sheets and tabloids. But with the invention of this new technology, the Demir are putting the news on the airwaves. Don't ask how a guild once known as spies and information brokers found out about top secret is it technologies, but they did. And now working alongside members of the Izzet, they've chosen the 7th District for their studio. As you can imagine, this move forward in technology has drawn the attention of many for different reasons. Some wondering if there is profit in it. Some looking for a challenge. Some hoping it will fall apart. The station isn't even on the airwaves yet. Welcome to RNN and to the campaign. Have I got news for you? So, that is a brief uh, uh, introductionary, introductionary um, box text, should we say. Um, I hope that it uh, kind of sets the scene. Yeah. Um, quick drink, because that was a lot of talking. <laughs> so... As you've probably gathered from the box text, I prefer to tell the stories not so much about the heroes of Ravnica, but about kind of the everyday people of Ravnica, uh, which is why we have this assembled motley crew here. 
Um, so let's get down to it, shall we? Now, you all know that you've been working in the building for a while, right? You've all been uh, working at RNN Studios. So let me tell you a little bit about RNN Studios. The RNN Studios are located pretty much smack dab at the center of the Di District 7's 3rd Precinct. The newly finished building built in a very modern architectural style. Lots of metal, glass, and with all kinds of is it league doohickeys and who's it oozing from the top. The main entrance of the studio is just off of the Yelro Cortara Plaza, which is no surprise as the plaza makes up most of the third precinct. Bordered by restaurants, coffee shops, boutiques, businesses, and the offices of the 7th District Time Picayune and the now RNN Studios, Yellow Quartara Plaza is a massive park built up around the entrance to Zonot 11, the mile plus across sinkhole that doubles as the entrance to the Simic campus here in the 7th District. Named after the first curator of Zonot 11, Yellow Quartara Plaza contains within it the aforementioned Rosa McMillan Park, and a rarely found shock of nature in the metropolis of District 7. The only other major, na uh, major nature centre is in Precinct 1, as that is where the uh, Celestian Conclave from District 6 um, sort of falls over a little bit into District 7. District 7 doesn't have its own Selesnian Conclave. It kind of shares the big one with, with District 6. Um, inside the in Studios, the building is much like the outside. Built with modern Ravnican sensibilities in mind. Large workspace-style newsrooms where people work in teams and groups to prepare for the station's launch and work on various programs and shifts. While the newsrooms take up the majority of the building, there are also maintenance rooms, conference hall, multi-purpose rooms. There's even a cafeteria, which is closed 90% of the time. And when it is open, uh, uh, um, the top three floors are offices, offering amazing views of the residents for the residents and often worry for those being summoned there. There are an assortment of studios, one on the ground floor with a glass wall overlooking the plaza, one on the top floor, and one underground, all currently in a state of incompleteness. But the Izzet engineers assure the boss that everything will be ready for the big day. Um, so, uh, any questions about the building itself? Are there many plants inside? Yeah, there's, there's, there's plants, there's, um, imagine a fairly, like, modern newsroom. Like, if you were to go to somewhere now, like, go to, like, CNN or whatever. Kind of that. that. That's the, kind of, the advantage with Ravnica over most D&D &D settings is they have things like electricity, right? So, but they just haven't got past newspapers. Just weird. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> Until now. <laughs> okay, so. Oh, on me. Um, so you, most of the time, the guilds, while each of the guilds have representatives here at um, RNN, there are a few guilds that are conspicuous by their absence. Three in particular, which are the Simic, the Gruul, and the Golgari. Um, which doesn't really surprise any of you. Um, the Simic and the Golgari kind of stick to their own thing, and the Gruul, well, they're out being barbarians on the outskirts of society. Um, but you do kind of, like, each clan has, uh, each, each sort of guild has its own area within the building, you do intermingle when you're, like, working on things, but, like, all the Rakdos tend to sit together and all the all the Seneslians tend to, to, to be in one place and all the Izzets are... Uh, all of the Izzet League are down in the, the, the engineer workshops and uh, all of the Demir are actually, like, getting work done because 
they still have to put a newspaper out even though they're preparing for a and I like to imagine that the the Orzov the little Orzov section yeah um they're building cubicles but right now it's just like long folding collapsible tables yeah and and little ghosts and uh spirits are picking up the memos and running them to someone at the other end for them to like stamp and officiously before running it back to the person to put their initials on it before running it to some yeah and then but like inside the building there's like a big uh like a pressure tube network you know like uh you know like those things where you like you write it and you put it in a tube and you put it and it disappears and like a couple of minutes later it comes back there's a huge pressure tube network running inside the building um for like communication between departments so they're um, basically making ghosts obsolete no it, it's just <laughs> they're doing it the the ghosts would be for interdepartmental like inside your own department this is for communicating from like the ors of to say like the is it that are like 12 fours down sort of thing or from the rakdos to the demir um and there is definitely even though even though there's a um a certain amount of uh what I'm looking for equality amongst employees there's still a definite hierarchy within the clans right um like to use the Rakdos, for example there's still like your main anchors that will appear on air are still like higher ranked than like the makeup artists, right? So it's like six one half dozen the other. Okay. Um. Let's start with everybody rolling a D four. Everybody rolling a D four. D four. Ah, shit. I said D four. Fine, we'll use that. Two. Wouldn't go to two. I rolled a three. Jamie, Poetic, what do you get? I'm continuing the trend and rolling a three. Oh, nice. Amy, four. Ooh. You folks give me <laughs> one second, I will be right back. No one rolled a one. So that's either really good or really bad. Right. That's for the D20. Oh, yeah. so found it. Yeah. Couldn't actually find a uh, uh, D4 in time. So I just used an eight. Because oh. I, have, <laughs> I have an eight set aside because my primary melee weapon is a mace. Mm. Which is a, no, the crossbow is the one that uses the eight. Mm -hmm. But still, uh, <laughs> which is uh, quick. Um, I'm just having these amusing little, these little amusing little images of what the offices inside of this building kind of look like. Like, <laughs> Rakdos is the main on-air talent. You just kind of a little extra diva-ish. I'm just getting, I'm just getting thirty rock. I'm just getting thirty rock vibes. Just to be honest, I'm just getting thirty oh, rock vibes. The area where Rurik works, all of the ferns are like overgrown and everything. Oh yeah, <laughs> vines oh, growing yeah. everywhere. <laughs> just whatever the Selesnia section of the the thing is, is just. Oh, the Selesnia is where the uh, near where the uh, the cafeteria is. It's kind of where the you know we're going to sit and we're going to eat our lunch, but it's closed ninety percent. of the yeah, those nice. Our our, our dungeon master's there, voice yeah. is off. <laughs> Sorry, I forgot to mute right. my microphone on this end. Uh, I've got a one, a two, and two threes, right? Uh, two. Uh, I got a four. a four. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll start with Jordan then. Um, Jordan, you get. It's not long before you're you're, sta you're kind of doing a tour mm -hmm. and uh, evaluating things like is everyone using paper clips correctly and <laughs> you're counting the amount of staples people are using and uh, at which point uh, a small ghost uh, reverently walks up to you with like a a, a, a parchment and 
proffers it up to you. I'll lean over and slowly opening it, and as like I'm opening it, kind of just a quick. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so you you start sending the ghost away, and yep. you open it up, and it goes, uh, "Meeting, editor in chief's office." Now, uh, I am now as white as the ghost. Yeah, not that my not that I not that I had a very dark complexion to begin with. Um, being of the syndicate, I'm a very pale skinned person already but now i'm i'm <clears throat> making sure my robes are all neat uh check my uh check myself and quick polish of the the medallion <sighs> and i will try to walk with as much dignity while not sweating bullets <laughs> maybe doing a little of this in the hallway when no where no one can see <laughs> while not giving away that you pooped yourself <laughs> um clench Clench cheeks. Um, who? Uh, uh, what guild is the the editor in chief from? He's Demir. Okay. The, this, uh, the majority of the people in this building are House Demir. Okay. Um. And yeah, that, that's how I'm sort of going. Like anybody who sort of peeks out uh, while I'm trying not to do it where people will notice i i am very much mm -hmm. don't don't let sweat stains leak through just uh make sure that everything is nice and dry nice and dry nice and dry as i get into the lift and just sort of <sighs> yeah doing some, some breathing exercises <laughs> all right uh jamie um you you get like a a, a message like pop down the um the, the the pneumatic tube and one of the other engineers picks it up and they're like hey augustus hey the editor-in-chief wants to see you uh, what'd you do uh, this time um <laughs> hopefully not blown anything up hold on let me go through and shuffle these around uh probably that is about to explode hold on let me Turn. All right, we're good. All right, uh, I'll be up there. Post these. Don't worry about it. It's probably just nothing. Another, he wants another status report or something. He probably threw the last person out the window. Uh, well, he's gonna have a hard time trying to throw me out the window, even though he probably could. But I'm not gonna give him that chance. <laughs> I, I think you're grossly underestimating the existence of the catapult spell. <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> At poetics uh you are leading uh meditation early morning meditation for for the the conclave and mm -hmm. and any other visitors that wish to all, join you of course all are welcome and uh there's like there's a rack dose here and there's like a uh there's a member of the the, the azorius senate is, is, HR sent someone down here for yeah, anger just management, to, just to make <laughs> just to make sure the the, the rack though showed up right, like, <laughs> um, and uh, a little while in, you get like a um, you get a, a I'm trying to think of what will the Slesny equivalent of a familiar would be like a little squirrel or something like mm -hmm. climbs down and it's got like a little uh, uh like message in its little <laughs> front paws uh i will continue to lead them in their breathing as i try not to uh uh be distracted uh while i i uh, graciously accept the uh the the small squirrel's offering yeah, it's the exact same thing meeting editor in chief's <laughs> office now uh, I will. I will invite uh, the senior uh, meditation student uh, uh, Natalia to 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 lead the rest of this uh, this important centering ceremony. Uh, <laughs> what race is Natalia? Uh, oh, she's a she is definitely a a, a half elf, which uh, which displeases her parents. Mm. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the, Natalia. Her parents are both elves. Natalia makes her way to uh, 
sit down between you to, and like so then you can stand up without like if the, without disturbing the flow of, of energy in the room yes. she like intercepts the flow mm -hmm. um and then uh amy uh you're sitting at your desk working away on paperwork putting together like uh you're putting together like a a page for the picayune right because you still have like a side job with the, the times picayune because you're you, you've been you were picked to come over here but while the easier are having to get all the 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 doohickeys online you're still having to put out a newspaper right like um so you while you're sitting there um another member of the demir goes uh uh, uh zimix this uh this came for you and like drops a thing in your inbox uh, Zimzix, Zimzix. Don't, people don't speak goblin around here. What? What is this? What is this? <sighs> I don't have time to be messy. If they're giving me another assignment, I'm going to bite someone. <sighs> okay. Same thing. Meeting editor in chief's office now. Yeah, I, I, I grumble my frustrations the entire way there. Okay. So you all come out on the top floor about the same time. Okay. And um, as the doors open, you come out into this waiting room. Lots of chairs, big table in front of you. And uh, behind the table is uh, Secretary Lim. <coughs> Pardon me. Guess we know who gets the big bucks around here. <laughs> uh, Adelchi sort of is looking down his nose at everyone and uh, you you almost see him kind of want to pull out a, a measuring tape to make sure that you know uh augustus's tusks are are just are just so <clears throat> that uh and that uh zimzix's ears are appropriately angled and pointed as one needs to be did anybody smell something Okay, so behind the table, you see uh, Secretary Lim. Secretary Lim is a young female goblin sitting behind a desk that on one side has a very full in tray and on the other side has a perpetually empty out tray. Usually scratching away on some form of paperwork, Lim, it seems, is always here. There is an old adage about the first through the door in the morning and the last to leave at night. You aren't sure if F Secretary Lim ever leaves. Regardless of the state of potential paperwork she finds herself in, Lim always wears a genuine smile and a smart pantsuit. A beautiful crafted clasp on her ear has a bowl of hard candy sitting on her desk for anybody who wants one. The wall behind her is a blur of constant activity, containing a pneumatic tube to most floors while having to distribute paperwork to them. Um... Have you ever seen the West Wing? Mm -hmm. Secretary Lim is very much like Mrs. Landingham, but young. She's a very affable person. Um, she looks up as you all sort of come out of different lifts. She's like, ah, please have a seat. The director will be with you momentarily. Uh, I heard she's a invention from the Is It. Hmm. Well, uh, no invention that I've uh, participated in or had my hand at uh, making. I uh, I will stand for this uh, this week. I've been sitting all day, tooling around on random inventions or fixing things or having things blow up in my face. Whatever so. makes you happy, darling. Rurik will sit and happily explore the energy of the room. It's a very 
it's just a very nice room. <laughs> I'm going to pace around impatiently because I've got work to do, and damn it, I don't need to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I would uh, I would like to pilfer a couple of those hard candies. Hey, you can you, you can help yourself. Definitely gonna I, grab hey, one too. There you go. Helping myself is nice. All right. Um, you've probably got about five minutes before you get called back. If you want to take any time to talk to each other, now would be a good time to do that. Give you some time to, to, to RP. Did your notes say now? Mine said now. Why are we still standing here waiting? I'm sitting. But now. <laughs> I mean, if I'm honestly, going to be here now, then you should see me now. I mean, honestly, I, I do have a lot of work to do. I have, there's so much stuff that has to get done. So many things that need to get fixed. Some of these, some of these, little doohickey camera things aren't floating like they're supposed to and well i've had hit a couple of them with a hammer and it that's they've kind of flown for a little bit across the room but they've flown so hopefully you know if we get a chance to if this doesn't take too long i can go back and finish my work but what if she very poignantly pulls a, a like a ledger out from beneath his robes and sits down, crosses a leg, pulls his pen out. Seems like you did not come prepared and you are being wasteful of the company's time. What if the letter said now, but it took us a couple minutes to get here and so other appointments have filled in between now and now? Well, then they shouldn't have said now. They should have said come at nine o'clock. Well, they meant then, now. But now it's now. Now. Thank you, Colonel Saunders. <laughs> <laughs> Note to self. Reduce herbology budget for Celeste. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's much bee pollen for that one. <laughs> So it's at this point that um, the door opens and out comes uh, what can only be described as a woman who has been poured into her outfit. Um, you all know this as uh, as uh, Jandis. This is the uh, head um, Rakdos representative here in the studio and is going to be one of the main on-camera personalities um, that uh, is going to be appearing. Um, Did you say her name one more time? Ja Jandis. Jandis. Like Jaundice, but different. <laughs> um And she's muttering under her breath about he he didn't want to see me. And as she's storming past, Secretary Moon goes, Well, you did storm in there without an appointment, love. And Janice just sort of gets in a lift and presses a button. She is one of the most beautiful women you have ever seen. Um Zim Zix, I think it's at this point where you consider if someone might at one point, find someone attractive. <laughs> um, she got gams. <laughs> at which point, uh, I take pictures of her. At which point, Secretary Lim says, "The uh, the the editor in chief will see you now." Now, finally, now since I've been up and pacing, I'm just going to go straight for the door. <laughs> As you enter the office, the opulence of the top floor continues. This opulence is unusual amongst the Demi journalistic workspaces, as usually outside of a few personal trinkets or items, 
The mere officers are about what is needed to get the job done, while a few of RNN's executive officers have veered away from this owing to the presence of other guilds. The sheer majesty of this office speaks to how high a regard the editor in chief held by House Demir. The wall far opposite you is floor to ceiling reinforced glass window, framed by luxurious black curtains, and the glass itself ever so slightly tinted to remove the glare of the sun. The view of the penthouse provides overlooking not only Yelmaro Quarto of the Plaza but the Rosa McMillan Park below, but most of the 7th District. The east and west walls are taken up with tall bookcases filled with old leather-bound volumes and display cases, filled with all kinds of souvenirs, antiques, and more. On the wall behind you are more of the pneumatic tubes used for communication, another display case containing an ancient dagger and a fully stocked bar which is where the editor-in-chief has stood when you first come in, pouring himself from a drink from an expensive-looking decanter into a delightfully etched glass. Old, even by their standards, a loxodon, Borge Chula is still as majestic as ever he was, resplendent in a perfectly tailored suit made of the highest quality black fabric with blue pinstripes, which... If you look very, very closely, each of the pinstripes is made up of tiny Demir symbols. He takes up the tumbler into his strong hand and crosses back to his desk, waving his hand towards the bar as if to invite you all to have a drink. Oh, yeah. Uh, what time of day is it? <laughs> About 11 a.m. Oh, okay. Time for a double then. It, it, this is very clearly a, a trick and a trap in Adelchi's mind, and he will not <laughs> partake. <laughs> I will definitely partake. Rurik will have the darkest thing there. Okay. Do you all pour yourself a drink <laughs> except for the for the Orzov, uh, which goes noted, it seems. Um... <clears throat> He, he uh, sits down behind his desk and he's like, ah, warm as a handful. Ah, Looks please, like it. Sit. <laughs> yeah, come over, sit. All right, so. Apologize for the delay, but that woman stormed in out without an appointment. But appearance-wise, I think the lock has done the equivalent of J. Jonah Jameson. Right? I'm just Basically. imagining J.K. Simmons playing yeah. an elephant. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I hear his voice already. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Bring me pictures of Spider-Man. Well, we'll just go to the Simic. Um, Got it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> he looks at you and goes, right. Um... Everything you've been worked been working on previously has been reassigned this morning. Uh as I have a an urgent job for you all. Why are you looking like that, Zim Six? The picky you needs to go out. I I, I... Yeah, someone else is working on your layout. <clears throat> oh, it's gonna be miserable. Yes, well, shut up. Um I don't know how to put this, boys and girls and others. Um, there's been a bit of a balls up. <sighs> so what exactly how much is, gonna is cost? broken? Right, so the Orzov was supposed to get the document, the document signed that allow us to go on the air tomorrow. Um... Y yes. No, 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 just t taking notes, sir. And he's yeah. trembling with his, his. But the Orzov didn't get the job done. 
uh he pulls he opens a um a drawer in his desk pulls out and no no this is a wooden desk wooden desks are fairly rare on ravnica um pulls out a large thick book and puts it down he goes turns to the very last page on the very last page there are nine signatures okay uh well there's eight signatures and a big red x that looks like dried blood which you're assuming is from the gruel um <laughs> here signed are nine of the guilds conspicuous by its absence are the simic luckily enough we border a zonot so I'm sending the four of you down into the Zonot. You're going to uh, test the field equipment by attending their press conference about the opening of the new water park <coughs> and hybridization technology. After which you have a meeting with the director of the Zonot, at which point you are to negotiate for him who sign the treaty. Understood? Sounds easy enough. Yes? I'm, I'm just curious about how uh, I have brought your displeasure upon me. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Shula. My displeasure upon you. Uh, Not yet. <laughs> If you don't get the ba bally job done, you will. Why do you think you're in my displeasure? Because a field assignment, sir. <laughs> yes, that is what you are all here for, to go into the field if needed. Uh, yes, sir, my apologies. We will we will get the Simic signature, sir. Don't you a bally coward? I'm a bally bureaucrat, sir. You walk to work every day, don't you? Yes. You want to keep tracks on all of the expensive equipment that we've been taking into the field, don't you? Yes. Yes. How else do you intend to do that? If you aren't going with me. I see your point, sir. Excellent. Well, drink up. Good gin. And he, uh, he, he, he looks over, and as you're getting ready to leave, he just, like, uh, you have about an hour before the meeting. Also, uh, don't cock this up. I should have stayed at the Picayune. <laughs> Not too late for me to send you back. Yeah. <laughs> well, if we don't get this done, I may have to. If don't get this done, you'll be fired. I think we'll all be fired. They just bowing and scraping and bowing and scraping and bowing. I just say, you got it, Chief. We'll get it done. That's the confidence I like to hear. Well, get, uh, get. Going. Right, we're, we're, we're going. Put the empty glass down and get. <laughs> Aren't Tuck you forgetting something? Holds up the oh, book. we need the book. <laughs> That's that one's job. It is true. The keeper of the, uh, the, keeper uh, of the articles. Oh, so, so sorry, Mr. Shula. So, Just ner very clearly nervous wreck for having to be in this office. Odulin's very much not a factor to him, but still. <laughs> Didn't Try not to sweat him. on the print. <laughs> <laughs> once once in the uh, the lobby, though, I'll put the book down on uh, Lim's desk and then put my, my gloves on and then pick the book back up. <laughs> 
<laughs> Alright, so like, like you said, you've got about an hour before the press conference starts. Um, How far away is this? It's literally right outside. Oh, okay. Oh. I mean, she has small legs. <laughs> right, th- think, <laughs> th- th- think like... <laughs> Think like if you, I'll get your ride you, on one of the cameras. If you like come out of the front of the building, you're coming right out into the park that the zona is in. Mm-hmm. Oh, like, okay. So you've got time to like make sure the prince getting done right. Make sure the prince get check up on what's going on, or uh, report back if you need to, or um, go get a coffee, or like. I'm giving you opportunities to be like, oh, I want to go do this before I move the story along. So, I'm definitely going to get my walking stick. Okay, it's very. I'm going important. back down to uh, my little workshop, making myself a coffee, and trying to grab all all the uh, equipment that we need. I can but imagine first... your workshop. Uh, the word coffee has expired like many many years ago, and now it's like a triple soy latte, you know, with a with a steam foamer and everything. Oh yeah, like. <laughs> <laughs> like they have full on like coffee machine and no TV yet. Yeah, because <laughs> we can't uh, start this journey without a nice strong cup of coffee. I'm definitely gonna go back and make sure somebody is working on the okay, print. Okay, so and getting he, it done. He, here's a uh, here's the thing that we can do before we move on. I have been racking my brains for a coffee from from Ravnica. You know how like Star Trek has racked to Gino. And how this co- uh, cappuccino and stuff like that. What is like the popular coffee called on on, on Ravnica? Ooh, uh, what hmm. I is. I imagine it can't be guild related. Like, <laughs> well, bear, in mind, that, related. bear <laughs> in mind that most of the coffee shops would be run by like the Rakdos, right? So, hmm. I'm afraid I don't know enough about it to, to give a good answer, but it would it would have to be something, having to do with the Rakdos, be something ostentatious, I'm sure. Oh, very much so. so I keep just wanting to say Rakdosino. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, hey, it is. Uh... Maybe. Ooh, I mean, uh, just trying to. It's either that or just something like completely chaotic and out there. Yeah. Uh, we'll just stick with Rack to Gino for now. I think. I just think. R a r a k d o c c i n o. Yeah. Racto Chino. <laughs> we'll workshop that. We'll workshop that. Um. So like someone's off. They've made like a Racto Chino run. They've come back with like cups with like the torchlight cafe on them and things like that, which is like. <laughs> and and there's like bagels and. Ooh. So what are each of you doing? Uh, yelling at some people. And you're yelling <laughs> to make sure everything's getting done right. <laughs> I am grabbing myself a bagel. I'm pouring myself a cup of coffee. I'm going back down to my workshop. I'm going to work on a couple of things before grabbing some equipment to head out to the field. Right, you're grabbing your your walking stick. Yeah, I'm grabbing the walking stick and uh, and making sure that my uh, that my afternoon um, deep breath class, which is different than the morning meditation class, oh, of course, yeah, um, and very different from the, one's about uh, from cleansing the... your mind, the other's about cleansing your body. Yeah, yeah, uh, I want to make sure that. Uh, uh, that it's being taken care of and to and to really watch out because uh, Narsham's asthma uh, can act up at times, and if so, make sure to give him the uh, um, uh, the pipe of healing, um, which probably doesn't actually do anything. But it, like you like know. you're standing there, you're listing off this list of things, and Natalia's like, uh huh, uh huh, 
uh-huh <laughs> like you haven't told her this stuff like a million times oh before. yeah rourke is just excited like oh this is neat um she's like and you yeah need and to, you need to i know rourke, at, 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 it's like you're just <laughs> got it check <laughs> and absent-mindedly, he's going to uh, he's going to raid a small supply cabinet and get a uh, a small bag full of uh, natural traveling <coughs> shoes. Ooh. You know the kind of snacks that you might have while walking yeah, around absolutely. a long city. Like yeah, um, they're all kinds of bark and stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, uh, absolutely. No, I can't believe it's not trail mix. Yes, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. I can't believe it's not trail mix. Um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Favorite day, monster <laughs> trail mix. Exactly. I'm going to be grabbing some of my low tech cameras that yeah. that work perfectly fine. I have about five of them hanging off of me in different mm-hmm. places. <laughs> All right. Um, you all reconvene at the like entrance area about half an hour later. I'll say. Um, so Je- uh, 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 Augustus you've got like the little floating camera with you mm-hmm. right um, I'm going to say you have like a spell that controls it but it doesn't count towards any of your spell slots or anything that like that it's just like a just a thing you can do yeah um And you head off uh, outside. Um, is there anything you want to do before you go into to the Simic area? Is it a coffee shop or? You wanna... say, I'm, I'm definitely, I'm definitely dusting off, or you know, making sure that I look, I look proper in. Uh, I'm going to assume in... that you're all like trying to put on your best. I wouldn't go that far. Uh, <laughs> I mean, Rur- I, w- I would say that Rurik is probably wearing a um, what others might consider a rustic uh, tunic uh, more than anything. Um, a far cry from maybe the the, the robes and, and whatnot that some of his companions are, are wearing. But it's still the uh, best. You, you're still trying to make it look the best it fair. can look. That, oh, I mean. absolutely! Yeah, I, I want to make sure I don't have any, you know, extra sap. I'm not. I'm not me. assuming that you're going to show up in a top hat and tails, right? Like, I'm right. just saying that, like, for the as best as your character can look. <laughs> we we are going. We're going down into the Simic sewers. We cannot afford the 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 dry cleaning bills for your Sunday best. So please, uh, just a small correction: the Simic Zonots aren't sewers. They're like underground skyscrapers. You're thinking of the Undercity of the Golgari. Which we'll get to <laughs> later. We're also going to a water park press conference. Yeah, we are. <laughs> Rurik, is, Rurik will probably spend most of most of the trip, um, however short it is, talking about how excited he is to see the water park. That okay. just sounds exciting. That <laughs> a small thing about the Simic Combine. When the Guild Pact was signed, the Simic Combine were Ravnica's doctors and physicians who worked to keep Ravnican citizens healthy and free of injury and disease. In the 10,000 years since then, (coughs) well, you know what they say. The more things change, the more they stay the same. Currently, the Simic are Ravnica's biological scientists, seeking to keep Ravnicans healthy and hale but on top of their normal medical duties like setting bones, treating victims of accidents, and they have also branched off into genetic manipulation. You see, many members believe that the wellness of Ravnica and its people come in the form of what they can call complete health, and they believe this will come from the adaptation and unity of oneness, and this leads them to encourage this. They do so by upholding the principles of the hold fast and the upwelling. The former has them stray not too far from nature, while the latter promotes that the new should replace the old. This has led somehow to the Simic grafting and mutating themselves with aquatic creatures. Not uncommon or even considered weird to most Ravnicans, 
To see a ranking member of the Simic Combine with one or more of their arms replaced with tentacles or crustacean appendages. Some grow wings, others become part frog or ooze. But their experimentation isn't all body horror and mutation. It's also brought about skin grafts and other really useful things for society. Cows that yield more milk or meat. Crops that feed more people. Admittedly, there is a rumour that every Ravnican is now at least 1% sea mammal, but eh, worth it. <laughs> now, what are Zonots? Once large sinkholes on the surface of Ravnica that led all the way down to Ravnica's long since covered over oceans and seas, the Simic took it upon themselves to turn these sinkholes business. Each Zonot has several levels that are dedicated to being hospitals and doctor's offices, more still to be administration, laboratories, and more, and so much more that the average Ravnican has no idea about. <coughs> Many even include swimming pools and water parks for the public to enjoy. Originally there were nine Zonots, but due to demand, several more have been created since. Zonot 11, formerly Zonot 4, specifically stands within Yelro Cortara Plaza, a beautiful park, the center of which is dominated by a large seamless dome, what appears to be glass at first sight. But glass would likely buckle under its own weight. Over a mile wide, the glass dome and safety rails allow you to look down into the Zonot and see many windows and viewing platforms built into the side of the seemingly bottomless pit. Think about the outside of a skyscraper, or the Azorian Senate's HQ New Prav. Now think about that, but going down into the ground. At each of the cardinal points of the dome, north, south, east, and west, is an entrance to the Zonot. The entrance to the north is mainly used for hospital admissions and doctor's appointments the southern mainly being used for deliveries and supply drops, east and west being used for tourists and visitors. And those, and the, the entrance nearest to, to RNN is on the southern side. Looks like you are going to take a walk through the plaza. <coughs> Pardon my coughing again. Just point out I do have a fairly sore throat. Um, so, it's a beautiful sunny day. Um, what what are you uh, what are you tr what are you doing? Well, it's probably like a fifteen minute jaunt through the park. Asking in that sunlight, just and it, this is a a uh, a beautiful day to be outside, and uh, Rourke is certainly enjoying it. I like to imagine the fact that a Delchi has a parasol. What are you? You were Vanthyr? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I have a uh, custom made um, uh, sunglasses mm -hmm. because I'm normally stuck inside of a very dark room. So they double, they double as welding goggles. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> It'll switch to make them even darker. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Peril sensitive sunglasses. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Zayfod. So you say it's fairly common for the 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 Simic to have these water parks and sort of. Mo most Zonots have them. Zonot yeah. four hasn't until now. Zonot eleven hasn't until now. And now they're just... they're like opening the biggest park of all. The it, it just it, like it a... just seems questionable to me that these folks who are doing a medicine and bioengineering and stuff have entertainment centers or... well, every, they, they're sort of everything about them is aquatic based right like so having a water park is natural hmm. you, you, you don't have beaches in Ravnica we thing. don't have oceans you don't have oceans mm -hmm. there's no free flowing water everything is covered by city so they have the zonots that go down into what used to be the oceans. Hmm. So they have access to water. So they're going to they do something it with it. So they yeah. bring it up, <laughs> purify it. I, on, a, on a personal note for Adelchi, he's kind of offended at the fact that 
well in, in our in our uh, district. Uh, we were the home to Zonat Four, but since the construction of the new ones, we have been uh, relabeled to Eleven, which just kind of <laughs> hurts the. District 7 is the most boring of all. District Pride, right. Yeah. <laughs> that we have been recategorized and redistributed. Yeah. I... Right. <laughs> Cat wants down. <laughs> he didn't agree. Cat, Cat wants down. <laughs> okay, so I'm, I'm just kind of, you know, going along with the flow, wondering why I have these weirdos with me. Uh, Rourke is going to wonder and, and probably ask the group uh, if they think they're going to be water slides. Uh, if, if, if there are water slides, I would like to remind you of the fact that uh, I need you to sign... Uh, no one's going on the water slides. I need you to sign a liability release form 7B as well as insurance premium and we have work to do no one's well, going on the water slides well if they invite us it would be rude not to take them up on the offer that is true and and how better to to get a signature than by showing that we enjoy their facilities plus we have to test the uh, well i'll test the structural integrity of said slides I'm just loving the fact that half the party is, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna have fun. The other half is just a neurotic hot mess. Um, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rourke is not intelligent enough to be neurotic. <laughs> and hey, think about it like this: I have the camera; it's floating beside me. I can give people a first-person look at what going down the slide looks like. So that... for people that can't go to this park, this is supposed to be the biggest park. You know that just makes sense. You know, what's, is... what's wrong with a nice handheld? I could take this anywhere. This this goes with me. I don't have to worry yeah. about it crashing into stuff or taking that, pictures of... You could take it down the water slide. Listen, that old technology is old. I had an analogy, but I couldn't think of it. But It works <laughs> just fine. <laughs> it can work just fine, but this is video, not a still photo. You know? Like, we can... I'll be able to show everybody the process of waiting in line and it might work for this Waiting newfangled technology that uh, they're yes. working to roll out, but the ultimate excitement of queuing. I don't want to queue. I just hopefully, if we can get there early enough, we should be <laughs> the first one. To I don't want to queue. I just want to go ride the slide and be good. All right. So you uh, you're walking through the the sunny plaza, um, and you make your way to the the eastern entrance. And each of the each of the east and west entrances have like a, a visitors center um, at the top that is like we are the Simic. This is what we do, kind of thing, right? And um, like you walk inside this big visitor center, and like along one wall, there's like a case with like a broken down, like almost like an exploded view of like a Simic hybrid and like things pointing to different bits going, this is an air bladder. It does this. And da, da, this is like, a like the visible man kind of. Yeah. Kind of thing. And it like, and it just shows you like this person chose this upgrade because of this. Right. It's because the kids section build your own Simic hybrid sort of dolls <laughs> action figures. And like it, when you go into, when you go into like the, 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 the gift shop, there's like a build a bear workshop. But it's like build your own Simic hybrid, and it, like you get build, to stuff it and make build it out a with nightmare. You. <laughs> I, I kind of see this place as an OMSI, you know, a, a, a center, a museum of science and industry. So it's mm. kind of like a yeah. combination of stuff. It's definitely <laughs> sort of like uh, it's definitely sort of uh, 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 the visitor centers are very much sort of like this is the good the Simic does, right? Like this one has a lot of things like about hybridization and that kind of thing, and the other one has a lot of things about like this is how we improve crops and this is how we help medical science and this is how we work with other guilds. That section is very small um, because the simic <laughs> don't. Um, they kind of keep to themselves, really. Um, 
and like oh we send a doctor every, to every Rakdos performance like that kind of thing um, just one that's you're being kind of stingy Simic <laughs> it's one big <laughs> doctor <laughs> with like 15 arms yeah yeah but honestly if something goes wrong at a Rakdos event the person's dead before they hit the ground let's be honest um But uh, yeah, so there's all these sort of like displays and like cool like images of hybrids and 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 heck, like DNA strands and there's like information on how they do hybridization. Like they talk about the pressure tubes and like <coughs> how you like you put the person in the tube and you flood it with different chemicals and. I think like a back to tank from Star Wars, right? Mm -hmm. And like they come out the other end looking like Zoidberg, right? Like, um, but with more legs <laughs> and more. <laughs> uh, and then there's at the like <laughs> at the very far end, there's like a um, like a visitor's desk. Uh, I'm gonna follow the uh, the the person with the book. Mm -hmm. I will. Uh, uh, we should probably find out where the conference is hit being held. That that's what Adelchi is going to ask at the visitors' desk. <clears throat> uh, I I am Adelchi, and these these are my associates from the Ravnica News Network. Uh, we are here uh, for the press conference of the opening of the new uh, water park, and we have a meeting. Uh, with the, your your uh, chief executive officer of this sonnet. Got your credentials? Always. He takes the credentials and starts filling out a form. Uh, take a look around <laughs> while I finish this and I'll call you in a minute. Very interestingly looks over the over the desk at the man filling out the paperwork. And she definitely, she, she like if she's doing this and you're looking over, she just gives you a... <laughs> you're in like she light. looks up in you and she's like, move. Slide like three feet to the, to, to the right. <laughs> and she's like... Don't walk away. I'm gonna call security. It's a, a frown and back up like 10 feet but still just he just starts filling out the, the paperwork um about five five or so minutes later she's like okay okay come over uh, adichi adelchi adichi and party adelchi and she looks right that's at probably you. us he looks right at you and goes, Adichie? <laughs> Just insufferable cynic woman. Snatch the paper from her hand. Ah, so much for going on water slides to impress them. And she gives, she, she gives uh, Zimzik your credentials back. Thank you. He's like, Thank follow you. me. Uh, just so you're aware, there will be uh, an area, uh, a small soiree to begin with, with a laid-on buffet. Ooh. Afterwards, you will be taken through to one of the areas for where you will be able to get to ask uh, questions, uh, uh, and along with the other journal journalists. Once that is concluded, you'll get a tour of the water park and some time to enjoy yourself. Can't ask you to review that, which you haven't tried, right? Absolutely. And she looks over uh, uh, at Detchi and goes, try not to suck up all the water, boy. <clears throat> you look a little She's desperate. saying you're sour. No, I'm <laughs> saying he looks dry and old and oh. annoying. <laughs> okay. and, he, and he looks up, she looks over at uh, Zimzik and she goes, just so you're aware, um, the director is aware that you have the meeting after the tour, um, and he will uh, like deal with that at the end. He'll come find you. All right. Just, just wait outside the dressing room. 
Okay. Thank uh, you. Towels and trunks and stuff will be provided. Ooh. Uh, he, she looks over at the locks it on and she goes, "She has some stuff to fit to you. Don't do, don't worry. No worries. <clears throat> we had a we had a centaur on the last trip, so and we we, we looked after him. Okay, so all right. Well, thank you. Uh, if you need anything, my name is Annie. Thanks, Annie. And uh, please enjoy yourself. And the door's like, bing, open. And there's... Annie, are you okay? <laughs> <I will. laughs> Not with you. I will be when you leave me alone. Um, and there's like a little hallway, and at the, end, the other end of the hall, you can hear some noise of people mingling and enjoying volivants and... And, and and things like that. So, well, buffet will at least make this worth it. Uh, Rurik misheard what she said and thought she said a Leon uh, buffet. And okay, so, like, I'm going to go ahead and say that no one would misthink that. Okay, <laughs> like the Selesnia are very much known for their like their spas and their catering and their parties. They know exactly what buffets are. Well, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, <laughs> I would. Ha you'd have to have like an intelligence of three to miss <laughs> go that bad. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> so, what is your intelligence? Nine. Yeah, that's not that much stupider than no, a normal it's not. person. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's probably more educated than most teenagers nowadays. Um. <clears throat> With the TikToks and the uh, uh, and the, the fart nights and stuff. Um, oh, oh me. Anyway, uh, you you get to the uh, the end of the hallway, and it's very much there's like four or five other journalists there from from different districts, different newspapers. Most of them are, are Demir. Or they're freelance, um, guildless folk. Um, I, I suspect I probably know more than a few. You probably do. You've probably worked with a lot of them, actually. Mm. Um, I may take the chance to schmooze. Kind of what this is for. Um, mm. So here's what we're going to do at this point. There are, I'm going to say six other journalists. Each of you is going to get to describe another journalist. Let's start with Jordan. Oh, Jesus. Why me? Because you're, uh, <laughs> you're the closest to me on the, the overlay. Um, okay. Uh, <coughs> one. Mm, one of the other journalists is... A uh, Rakdos man. Mm -hmm. um, Race. He is a. Uh, Just improvise it, dude. Don't worry about the no, chart. Uh, uh, no, I was. Um, elf. An elf. Okay. Um. Much in the same strain of the Rakdos Diva mm -hmm. that we had. Um, but um, more of that 19, 1930s, 1940s investigative journalist looking yeah. uh, type feel to him. Uh, the, the reporter from Lawrence of Arabia. Yeah. Like he's very much the I'm going to go out and I'm cool. going to go out and yeah have inspiration. Uh, let's go with Amy. All right, uh, I see one of my old uh, colleagues from the Picayune. I uh, it's yeah yeah Demir, um, and uh, sh uh, she is a human named Jerry, and she was the Agony Ant columnist. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 
poetics. Uh, Ashglade is a, an Orzov um, uh, reporter human. Uh, smells faintly of cologne. Uh, <laughs> Uh, fairly tall for a human, um, with uh, uh, with very dark skin, um, and seems to be enjoying the buffet uh, a little more zealously mm-hmm. uh, than some of the other Orzov are. And Jamie, what do you got? Uh, give me a second. I was thinking about um, adding a Boros, like a, a really low level legionnaire Boros. Yeah, it's there just, just to just add to do security. To, yeah, just for security. <laughs> <laughs> just because obviously that's that's what Boros do, you know. Uh, but they're kind of out there chilling uh, over there. Another human, you know, walking around. Mm. He's got his press badge on, even though he is doing. He's security. there to do security. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he's like sneaking one too many sausage rolls from the buffet. Of course. Yeah. Got a protein up. <laughs> well, I mean, you I'd did. like to go <laughs> and lumber over there and be like, hey, eat any more of those, you won't be able to fit in your armor. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, he, he's like, yeah, but if you've seen the stuff they serve us at the, the Bastion, man, rules six days a week. Oh, uh, oof. I can only imagine. So when I get to go to a free buffet, I'm taking the opportunity. <laughs> you get to mingle for about five or so minutes, and then you're guided through to like a a little auditorium area. Uh, and in walks uh, a figure. Um, walks is a generous term, because like both of his legs have been... Uh, replaced with like lots of like fit tentacles so he like scampers in like like you like if you could put a sound to it it would be the cut the sound of marvin the martian walking but he's like but like hundreds of legs um and he's got like one of his arms has been replaced with like a tentacle he's like one of his eyes comes out on a stalk and that's completely natural for a, a high up member of the Semic. Like it's not an unusual sight. Um, and I think at that point is where we're going to take our break. So excellent. Before we go out on break, I just want to say thank you to Alara, uh, Bookish Girl, and uh, I believe Gaming Poet is poetic. So. To Alara and Bookish Girl for the follows. Thank you. Um, you guys want to go ahead and put yourself on mute. Duration of the, the break. Um, we will be back in about five minutes. With the continuation of. Uh, Have I got news for you. Episode one. Zone not. And ease.